Any good accounting software should, of course, provide for the ability to track and record your expenses. And Sage One Accountant certainly is no exception there. Just as you saw with the revenue cycle, you have a comparable layout for the expense cycle. You're going to be able to get in there and you're going to be able to record your expenses in any of a couple of ways. right? We can write checks, we can enter a bill and pay it. Those are the two sort of high-level ones. We can certainly enter credit card charges. Those are the basic ways in which we capture expenses. And as you're about to see, Sage One provides for that beautifully. Let's see what this looks like. So we're over here in the sales area. And before we jump in to expenses, which is what this lesson is about, I wanted to show you what we've got here. Now, it apparently doesn't distinguish between sales and contributions, just money in. You know, we're looking at sales here. Because if you remember, the 150000 was not actually income. It was based on owner contributions. But that is showing up here. On the sales summary, uh, you also have, and we'll cover this in more detail in the reporting lesson, which is next. Um, we've got this nice little cash flow statement that shows cash flow and a little cash flow forecast. So really cool stuff. Um, a lot of features here that uh, you just don't see anywhere else. Really good. But now we want to record expenses. And it's not going to be rocket science here in terms of how to do that. We're going to come over here to expenses. And we can enter bill. We can enter, enter a vendor credit note. Or we can do a quick entry. And of course, if we go over to banking, and we go over to a new entry, there's an expense or payment. So we can do it directly out of the bank account that way as well, right? And similar to what we saw on the customer side, we have the sort of the mirror image, right? So we have a vendor payment, or we can do an other payment, or we can do a customer refund. So it makes sense. Payments, money going out of the bank account is all handled right here when we go into banking and we go into the expense entry. Um, so over here back on expenses, we can enter a bill. And again, it's really just uh, at this point, a matter of filling out a form filling out forms. So we're going to need to create a new vendor. And of course, just as with a customer, we can do that directly in the contacts area, or we can do it right from this dialog, which is really helpful. So the vendor is going to be I sell stuff. And uh, not going to do a reference, of course. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to make you watch me fill out forms. I'm sure you can figure out how to do that. But just quickly looking at what the choices are here, you can set the default expense ledger account for this vendor, which is really helpful, obviously, because in many cases, every time we pay the same entity, it's for the same thing, which means the expense account should be the same. And that doesn't mean that you won't have the opportunity to change it should you want to do it to some other account. But at least this will save you a lot of time and data entry, generally speaking. And then we have bank details, which, as I mentioned on the customer side, the fact that this is here gives me a clue that possibly, now that we're looking at the vendor side, I might be able to use this information to pay my vendors. And of course, we can make notes about the vendor. So really simple, really straightforward. I'm going to save that. And again, the, we can put in a vendor reference and then a reference. We have our dates. And then this is if we're buying a product from them, right? So let's say we are. Let's say we're buying. And obviously, this is if you're buying a product that you're going to resell right? So the ledger account, of course, for the product that we're creating, sales of materials, right? So the item code would be, let's just say, uh, one, two, three, dash, four, five, six, pocket protectors, right? For our old school accounting friends, description will be pocket protectors, right? Goes to sales of materials, uh, tax rate will take the default from the customer. The selling price will be, and look, you can set up three different selling prices, right? So let's just say that uh, the selling price of the pocket protectors will be $5.99. Okay, and we'll leave the others blank. We'll say the price does not include sales tax. Now we have the expense details. So the default ledger account will be the ex uh, exp uh, will be cost of sales. And the cost price, what does it cost me to buy it? Well, if I'm selling it for $5.99, hopefully it doesn't cost more than $3. Let's call it $1.99. So we're buying our pocket protectors for $1.99 and selling them for $5.99. Get a nice little markup on that. Okay, and now so now we've got our pocket protectors. The ledger account goes to cost of sales. And then we're going to click save. And guess what I want to do now? Let's run the balance sheet. Let's go to the videotape. 
So there's my accounts payable for a dollar ninety nine, right? Oh, and look, there's my accounts receivable for two fifty, right? That's from the last lesson we booked the, the invoice for five hundred. And anyway, um, so we got that, and then let's run the profit and loss because now the profit and loss should show my cost of sales of a dollar ninety nine, and sure enough, it does. It sure does. So. That kind of takes care of our products and services, and of course now we could, you know, obviously go out and sell those products. Let's go into this area though here, since we touched on this, um, on the expenses side here. So let's go into products, and let's see if it looks any different when we're creating a product directly from here. We're going to go new product, and we have the item code. So far everything looks the same, it's just laid out a little differently. Here's the expense defaults. And no, so it's basically the same information. It's laid out a little differently, but all the information's here. And so one thing that you might have gathered by now just from looking at it, and if not, I'll point it out, is that we are not able to track inventory just yet in Sage 1 accounting. My guess is that's coming, but uh, right now you can just track the fact that you sell the stuff and what you sell it for. So everything has to run through cost of goods sold, essentially. You're not going to track inventory using Sage 1 just yet. But like I said, that is probably coming soon enough. So, there's your products and services. We covered the services really fully in the uh, revenue cycle lesson, but on the expenses. Uh, so now we know how to enter the bill, okay? And of course, we can do a quick entry. We didn't look at the quick entry on the sales side, so let's just look at it here. New quick entry. And again, it just kind of takes you right into the line item form, right? Where you don't have to fill in any of the other stuff. So, and then you can click the vendor from the drop down, right? And then the ledger account and the details. Um, and notice what you don't have here is you don't have the product. So this is you're going to go straight to uh, booking the ledger account. You have a, you can do invoice or credit, right? So invoice obviously we're on the uh, ledger side, so we're on the expense side. So an invoice meaning a bill from a vendor, right? Uh, a credit would be if we're getting a refund from them. And that, my friends, is the quick entry for how to handle expenses. So now let's go pay something, right? So let's go back to the bank. New entry, expense, or payment. <coughs> okay, so we're going to pick our vendor. It's going to look a lot like the, um, the customer side when we received a payment on an invoice, right? So we've got the vendor, I sell stuff. We're going to pay it out of the checking. Okay, um, bank balance is $150,500. There's my bill for $1.99. Big, big money here. Um, and we can exclude disputed which is interesting. So we can we can put in a disputed amount. And uh, that's the story, and I'm sticking to it. So we paid $1.99. We've paid it all off fully on this one line item, and now we can hit save. And that's pretty much the expense cycle. Now, you might be wondering, okay, now that this is all done, we've got some income, we've received money, can I reconcile the account? Yes. And I know that's going to be a, a question a lot of people are going to be asking, because as I mentioned in the beginning of the first lesson, um, if you haven't taken a, a new look at, um, at uh, Sage One in a while, then you're definitely going to want to look because a lot of people I know balked in the past because there was no bank reconciliation. Well, now there is. So now you have no excuses. You have to start using Sage One for your clients because it can do bank recs. So that, my friends, gives us some sort of uh, clarification there on how the uh, banking side works with respect to the expenses. So we, again, we have vendor bills, we have credit notes, and then we have quick entry. So credit note, of course, is, and that's why you saw in the quick entry, the CRN stands for credit note, CRN. So that, my friends, is how you handle the expense cycle, right? You enter a bill, you pay it, you're pretty much done uh, with the expenses. And as you saw, we can enter expenses with respect to inventory that we buy and sell. And, you know, I want to mention something about this because I mentioned already that, you know, we don't track inventory in Sage 1. There's a, a, a big argument to be made in a lot of cases for not tracking the inventory. For example, I have a lot of contractors that walk in my door, and they assume they need to track inventory because on each job they do, they're buying the materials and they want to keep track of them, to, you know, and then they, but then they're using them. And what I always ask them is, are you using all the materials that you buy on a job for that job? In other words, are you just buying what you need for the job? And nine times out of ten, they say yes. And in that case, I say, then you don't necessarily need to go to the trouble and, frankly, the expense of tracking inventory in your accounting system. If you're concerned about making sure stuff's not walking off the yard, there's other systems that can be put into place for that purpose, 
But in, a, in an example like that, it could be a perfect scenario where you really could just use a simple accounting system like what you have here that doesn't necessarily track inventory quantities, but where you're just going to book all the purchases directly to cost of goods sold. And this way you're going to just book all your sales to sales and then you're going to get your resulting gross profit and it's not going to be a problem. So that, my friends, is my two cents on tracking inventory and Sage and how to handle expenses and purchases and all of those sorts of wonderful things. As always, I hope you had some fun along the way while you learned something. If you have any questions, visit our answers forum at schoolofbookkeeping.com right here. If you're not a student, become one so that you can access our answers forum right here at schoolofbookkeeping.com. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. We're going to talk about reports. Now we've seen how to handle all the revenues in Sage 1. We've seen how to handle all the expenses. That covers pretty much the range. Now it's time to take a look at what the output is. And I always talk about this in a general sense when it comes to any accounting software. We have the input, which is entering transactions. That's what we've seen so far. And then we have the ultimate output, which of course is going to be the reporting. And I think you're going to find that Sage 1 has great reporting.